Hey everybody, we're back with our second screencast, and we're going to be going over a feature of iOS that we think is a bit of a hidden gem, screenshots. Now, we know what you're thinking. Everybody knows how to take a screenshot, but not everybody knows about the power under the hood after you take the screenshot. And it's incredibly vital for us considering the work we do as Apple technology consultants. Imagine trying to communicate with someone that doesn't speak your language, and you'll have a pretty good idea how a lot of tech support conversations go. And it's just as frustrating for the person seeking support as it is for the person giving it. Fortunately, screenshots can help bridge that divide, because they take the guesswork out of trying to figure out what's plaguing a customer's device. Likewise, it allows us to illustrate to a customer a concept we're trying to help them understand. And Apple gets this, having recently made significant improvements to screenshots starting back in iOS 11. And they've recently upped their screenshot game on macOS as well, which we'll cover in our next video. And if you're interested in checking that out, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell, and YouTube will let you know the moment we publish it. For today, though, we're going to go over Apple's newest tools for screen capture in iOS. So to follow along, you want to make sure you're running iOS 12 on your iPhone or iPad. All right, let's jump in. So how do you take a screenshot? Well, if you've got an iOS device with a home button, you do it the way you've always done it, by pressing the home and sleep-wake buttons simultaneously. But if you've got a newer iOS device without a home button, you simply press the volume up button and the sleep-wake button at the same time. Once pressed, a small preview of the screenshot appears on the bottom left corner of your screen. If you do nothing, Within a few seconds, that screenshot will disappear and be added to your photos library. However, if you tap on it, it will fill your screen and you'll be presented with helpful markup tools and options for sharing. If after bringing it up, you decide you want to get rid of the image, simply tap where it says done and you'll be given the option of adding it to your photos library or deleting it. Note, this option is still available to you after marking up and sharing the image. So feel free to delete the screenshot after doing what you need to do with it. It's pretty great that your photo library no longer has to become a cluttered mess if you take a lot of screenshots. Okay, let's take a moment to run through all our screenshot editing and annotation options. I've taken a screenshot. What can I do with it? First up, cropping. Simply tap and hold on any of the blue handles around the image to crop it down to your liking. You can crop vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. One important note before we move on, if in the process of editing and annotating your screenshot you need to undo something, head up to the top right of your screen and tap the undo button. In this example, I only need to undo once, but you can undo as many times as needed. Next up, freehand tools. Starting from the left, we have a brush tip marker, a chisel tip marker, a pencil tip, and eraser. Next to that is a lasso tool, which can be used to grab your annotations and move them around your screenshot. And lastly, we have a color picker. Let's do a quick demo. Before you start drawing, make sure to choose what color you want to use as you can't change the color afterwards. To choose from a broad array of colors, tap on the color wheel off to the right. Once you've got your color picked out, you may want to change the line thickness and opacity of your drawing tool. To do that, Tap on any of the drawing tools and you're presented with a popover to configure those options. If you need to move your annotation, select the lasso tool, draw a circle around the image, then let your finger rest on the selected area to move the annotation where you want it. If you want to delete your annotation, after selecting it with the lasso tool, tap once inside the selection and you'll be given the options to cut, copy, delete, or duplicate your annotation. These are some really useful tools, but we're not done. If you look off to the right, you'll see a circle with a plus button inside. When tapped, you're presented with text, signature, magnifier, and shape tools. Let's take a look at how they work. If you've taken a screenshot and want to add some text, simply tap on the text button and an editable text box will appear in the center of your screenshot. When you tap inside it, you can begin typing whatever you want. And of course, you can move that text wherever you like by dragging it around. Also, when you insert a text box, the tools at the bottom change to allow for choosing the color as well as the font style and size options. 
Next, we have the ability to add a signature. To set one up, simply use your finger to draw your signature. If you're doing this on an iPad, you can use an Apple Pencil to create your signature. Once it's set up, you can easily select the signature and place it anywhere you like on your screenshot. Quick note, this signature will be available throughout iOS and can be used to sign PDFs as well. Following the signature is the magnifier tool. Simply put, this magnifies an area of your screenshot that you wish to draw attention to. The magnification diameter can be made as small or as large as you like by dragging the blue circle inwards and outwards. And the magnification percentage can be increased or decreased by dragging the green circle around the magnifier itself. And finally, we have the shape tools, including square, circle, speech bubble, and arrow. It's worth noting that when you select any of these shapes, the toolbar at the bottom changes to offer you the standard color picker, but also the ability to choose between variations of the selected shape. As you can see, there are a lot of options available. Once you're done annotating your screenshot, you can share it to any service by tapping the share icon on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Okay, that's it for screenshot editing and annotation tools. Next up, we're gonna talk about iOS screen recording. Apple's made sure you have everything you need for marking up your screenshots. But what if what's happening on your screen can't be captured in a still image? Maybe a part of your screen is doing something strange or when you tap somewhere in an app, it doesn't respond. There's definitely times when you need to show something happening in real time. That's where screen recording comes in. Getting it set up takes a few steps, but once it's done, it's very easy to use. Screen recording is activated from Control Center, but it's not there by default. To turn it on, let's head over to the Settings app, and from there, Control Center Settings. Next, we'll tap on Customize Controls, all we have to do now is find the screen recording option and tap the green plus button to add it to Control Center. Once completed, let's head back to your home screen. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna switch over to a live demo for the remainder of this tutorial. And that's because the screen recording feature becomes disabled when a phone is being demoed on screen. To initiate a screen recording, bring up Control Center and then tap on the screen recording icon to start the countdown. One important note, by default, screen recording doesn't include any audio, but if you want to record a voiceover, you can by pressing and holding on the screen recording icon. This will bring up the option to turn your microphone on when recording so you can narrate over what's happening on your screen. Let's do a quick demo. Okay, so I'll tap on the screen recording icon, and the countdown begins. Once the countdown ends, the button turns red to indicate that recording has begun. Once I leave Control Center, the time indicator on the top left of my screen also turns red to let me know I'm recording. When I want to end my recording, I'll tap on that and be presented with the option to cancel and keep recording or stop my recording. If I choose stop, my screen recording will be added to my photos library where I can trim it down for length and share it. Okay, that brings us to the end of our iOS screen capture tutorial. As you can see, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. And if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. We hope you learned something new today. We'd like to reach as many people as possible with our training videos, and you can help by giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. And when you do subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. Also, we really appreciate feedback, so let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks again. See you soon.